So everything, all the knowledge that you have, everything you've investigated, the book you've written, what's your whole rundown on this? What's your whole rundown from the 2nd of May to where we are now? Well, uh, um, like I said, um, there was a weak marking, positive marking by the cadaver dog in the in the bush right outside the patio. So uh, they're doctors. So about getting the body, first of all, getting her out of uh, behind the sofa and they put her in uh, in the bedroom, probably on some plastic or something to figure out what to do to package her before they get her out. And then out in the bush when they've in the timing of finding where to hide her. You look at the map of the town. Cemetery is a good place, right? Perfect. Uh, you do a little research too, but she's in the bush there in multiple layers of plastic garbage bag, probably uh, taped together or something, whatever you have available. Um, imagining that would be safe for the cadaver. The blood is not cleaned yet. Put her in the cemetery. Um, you rent the car three weeks later. They have done a lot of jogging and uh, based on the diary of Kate and her book, that she wrote later, you can see her experiences on the hill. Please don't let Maddie be buried here. She begs the praise to God. Uh, three days after her disappearance, she prays that the twins don't fall and bang their heads. That's kind of concrete because that's exactly what happened to Maddie. Things like that. Um, and then you have the rental car. Um, um, the alibi for getting that was, of course, to picking up and family uh, from the airport, which had been coming and going already three weeks. The reason they needed the car was to move the body, I think, um, uh, based on the findings in the car. And it makes sense in terms of the hill uh, because there's two big bumps up the road there. I think maybe there's been some spilling because if you're in the dark, even though it's full moon, you're sliding this uh, granite top. You have this plastic bag of a decomposing body, you know. Um, don't want to talk sludge and things like that, but there's... Uh, Amaral said that the liquid that was found in the car seemed like it had been a cooled or a freezer. And that could align with the, one of these cast granite uh, boxes. Even their overground, their con contact with the ground, it was a cold May. Um, that uh, it was put in the final bag and zipped, but there must be some kind of spill or something. So when that bag goes in the back of the boot of the car, um, there's something connecting to the fiber stair that gives this little the finding of the, the cadaver dogs and Kila. Uh, and they found the DNA, 15 out of 19 markers there as well. And uh, there you go. And um, uh, then it was all about keeping it together, getting the, the team on board on the, the faked abduction the next day, pretending everything is, uh, you know, fine and happy. And you can see even in, the, in, the, even in their language, which is uh, very interesting, they always have to remind, uh, yeah, me, uh, Fiona, she says, me and Kate and the three kids. Uh, and, uh, and they talk about buying five ice creams on the third. You say you buy ice creams for the kids. You don't say five. No, because they're trying to convince us that they were all there. Madeline too, right? This, is, this goes through the whole analysis thing. They use these numbers. Um, Why have they never took a polygraph test? Well, here's the with thing. That's again reverse all, psychology. With all the speculation. That's what they said. You would think, fuck it, I'm going to do yeah, it. Yeah, but they did. They said, oh, yeah, we're going to do a polygraph test. And then there were people were asking for it. And they said, no, it can't be used in court. Well, they knew that up front. That's what you do when you're guilty and you want to appear innocent. First, you get the PR stunt. Oh, and somebody see. Yeah, I saw on the paper that they are, you know, they're willing to take a polygraph. Yeah, you can't use it in court, but <coughs> sure puts a lot of speculation exactly. to bed. Yeah, yeah. Don't do one test, do two tests, yeah, yeah, and yeah. a few pass two tests. Exactly. It's like one in five million to one. So just exactly. end the speculation. But again, they might say, well, why should I? Which is understandable as exactly. well. You're not guilty because you don't do a yeah. test, but with so much speculation hanging over their head, they could have ended it straight away. Yes, of course. But then the question is, why did they say that they were going to take one when they knew that was never going to happen? Of course. So... But that's just, uh, it was a, a media stunt. It Probably 40% of people reading it, you know, never question why they didn't take one. But if Madeline, if if Madeline McCann has failed and bumped her head, then they've not killed her. So why not just call an ambulance? Why not just the doctors as well? Why not just try? Because, you know, when why they... try? Because it seems a bit more far-fetched than to try and cover it up, get rid of the body, then you are done for murder. So It's a point of no return because the panic of them discovering sexual abuse is everything. Everything. You lose the twins. You can't follow up the mortgage. 
you get a suspension of your medical license, both of them, it's over. But it's not only them involved. You got the, the child protection agency, agency look into the other families. It would be a nightmare. And it's an embarrassment for, you know, for Britain, the culture, if that was the culture, you know. In Norway, it's different. We, we just bring the strollers and they fall asleep eight o'clock at the, the table, dinner table, and then you stroll back home. If one wants to go to a bar, one goes to the bar, the other one takes the kid home. Yeah, that's what they do. It's like, vans, yeah, everywhere. Like Santa Pons, my yeah. mama, they're just all just to get steaming yeah, in yeah, the yeah, club. Yeah, yeah. When I mean, you look at it, it is still fucked up. Everybody's drunk and smoking, but yeah. that's the way it was back then. Yeah, but, but they, they wouldn't leave yeah. us in the room in a, in a foreign country. You would just get drunk and you'd go home. If yeah. your, your mum and dad would never steam in, you would go exactly. get some food yeah. go back to the apartment. Or my mum would take it back. Yeah. My dad would stay and get more drunk. But, but they had, the they had evening crash. This is why... Uh, um, um, they they kind of found uh, Tannerman. They switched him to Dr. Julian Totman. He was one of these guys who played tennis with uh, with uh, Jerry. And actually, Jane had seen him play tennis that same evening with uh, Jerry. Anyways, but she was sorry there to interrupt. See him. But yeah. do you think they could be possibly running after day two, day three, to try and find out a new spot for a new burial? Well, I think that as soon as they started running, that's what they were looking for, for sure. Okay. Like two days later, I think maybe yeah. they, I don't know. There's a rumor and not officially, but, but, but then it was the, for me, that was the May 19th, I think Saturday morning, 7 a.m. photo shoot on top of the hill. And uh, I don't know, that's kind of steep, that hill. Jogging there, you're in good shape. But it's like having the church. It's like showing, look, we run here, nothing to see here. And what happens after that, they had requests. Can you imagine the best view of the town is from up there? But then the, the response to why wouldn't you take photos that, no, we only take photos where it's a possibility where she could be found. There was this weird answer to that, you know, diverting from photos taking on the hill. Yeah. So, but it was convenient, people knowing they're jogging there. If you see us there, don't worry. You were going to say something there when I interrupted, sorry. Oh, Dr. Julian Totman, yeah. So this, this, uh, this new DCI, uh, Redwood, he came in taking over um, the investigation. I think you were talking about the crash. The, yeah, they have a night the, crash. The so, so their, their story was that Dr. Julian Totman popped up from nowhere who had played with Jerry. Oh, I might be Tunnerman, but he was walking the opposite direction and probably not in that time. Otherwise, he would have spoken out earlier. It could be me. So the timeline was off when they supposedly saw Tunnerman. Tunnerman doesn't exist. This is Jane Tunnerman not being there, but according to the plan, she was supposed to be there. But the plan crashed because when Jerry w w were setting off the play, the faked abduction play, he walked out the street without checking the street, which he said he never saw saw anyone the whole week. And there comes Jez Wilkins from BBC, guy there on a stroller with his daughter uh, or son uh, in his stroller up the street, and he crosses the street to chat with him. So he ruins the timeline they had set up for the faked play on this and so jane was supposed probably when jerry was supposed not to talk to him because she was on the time thing and he was going to come to the restaurant make sure everybody sees him and she goes up and then she sees him and actually goes check but she didn't she was waiting for the queue right so she never walked that past them because jess would have seen her she walked in flip-flops right by them this quietest street in the world narrow street there's impossible that he didn't see her so she wasn't there to see him so uh, dci redwood <coughs> He digs up Dr. Julian Totman, who came from the night crash. So there were night crashes there until 11. So when they go and dine 8 o'clock or something, they could have just taken their 8.30 or whatever to the night crash and picking up 11, and they can do the full dining, no chick, no, no risk, no anything. Or they could just don't be cheap and just pay some of these girls that were taking care of their daughters. And say, hey, can't you babysit three hours when we are drinking? Why that, didn't they? <laughs> no, I didn't know. It sounds insane because... I don't know. I think could they uh, just be naive to it all uh, as well? And this is, but, but they're all doctors, but they all can't be like the mechanics. Sally, yeah, like so they, you know, drugs. I mean, I know, like I, I told you, I know how my father looked at drugs. He abused drugs, like um, uppers and downers, and you know, he had a super career. He was like chief medical of Northern Norway before he was mm. forty, but he was using drugs, like these uh, uh, enhancement drugs, and. Um, and uh, my my uncle in Austria, he worked for Pfizer, like, you know, pushing, selling these things and anything. And the way they look at drugs is unbelievable. How, how uh, yeah, 
And and it could be that way. They were trusting in their what they had, the arsenal. Do you think we'll ever get answers with the Madlo McCann case? Well, this is the thing. You say, I'm not out to take them or m watch them fall. But of course, that's a consequence of bringing the remains home and giving her a piece and a grave at home. And this is what Kate wants too. She leaked so many times that she wanted to end this. And I suspect that she's been under threat. And I'm talking fiscal threat, not her, but the twins have been at risk. And that's why she hasn't left this uh, realm before. Because she, this is with the dream, the turning point dream. This is the media called it the turning point dream. When she called uh, Paiva, the liaison, when Jerry was in the US, she wanted them to actually find it without getting caught. It's a little naive. I mean, if you put this in a novel, you know, nobody would publish it. But that's how it is. If you're not a criminal and you come up with stories, they're bad, even though you're very intelligent. So she had this idea that she could say that she's hidden on rocks on a hillside overlooking in Praia de Luz. That's only one hillside that that could be, basically. Uh, she wanted them to find it, but that would point to her, right? Or she could pretend she was some you know, had a vision or something, right? Mm -hmm. And, but I suspect that there might be something in that grave that I could point to them and otherwise there's a, another cuddle toy missing and there's a pink blanket she might be rolled in and things like that. It's so, sad, isn't it? but I, I don't think she cared about that. She was, this has become too big for her nerves. Do you think someone could possibly break even 17, 20 years later where <laughs> they come clean with it all? I was maybe a little naive, uh, that I thought that she could break from my profiling of her in that book. I think they were, they're always proactive. You know, that's their mantra, proactive. It's a defense mechanism. Any criminal would be proactive. You want to know what the police does. You have the manuals on your bedside table. They had literally. Um, and I was thinking that, but here's the thing. As long as they're silent and the media is silent, nobody has to crack and just watch my book go away. But it will creep into Britain, hopefully, through you. Thank you, buddy. Man, you're one step ahead of anything. But as I was very shocked and, uh, you know, very honored and sh shocked, actually. So I, that's what I meant when I didn't sleep that night. That was the adrenaline. It wasn't something, mm -hmm. you know. Anyways, so, yeah, cracking. Oh, yeah, I, I was naive. I thought maybe Kate could crack from that to avoid me 